yeah, as shepherds, God. we must always be reminded that the sheep do not belong to me. Mm -hmm. I'm just an over shepherd. Very important. You know, as I begin to ponder the, the life of a shepherd, uh, the first thing I recognize is, Sister Stacy, that we don't have a proper understanding of a shepherd. Because why? We get our shepherd uh, understanding from the Western world. Think about that, from the Western world. Uh, and so that when we think of a shepherd, we look at people like Pastor T.D. Jake and these other great leaders that's in the community, and we think that's what a shepherd is. But we have no idea what a shepherd is from the ancient perspective. So that when we pick up this book, we're looking at a, a, a book about shepherds and sheep. All through our culture, it's very understanding that if you're going to study the ancient text, that we must begin to say, okay, what is a shepherd? Because we can see that the Most High is considered a shepherd. David understood that the famous psalm said that Yahweh is my shepherd. We read that without understanding what is a shepherd. When you look at us, okay, we look at the people of the book, all we were was shepherds. That's all we were was shepherds. If a shepherd is going to understand uh, sheep, he must understand by observing others who went before him, such as our father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We cannot learn shepherdhood from a Bible college. I, I, I want you to understand that. Shepherdhood is, when you look at it biblical, I'm, I'm going to be here because of time is just going to fly. Shepherdhood is one of the most dangerous jobs in the ancient world. I'm, I'm trying to get what I'm saying. See, in the, in, in, the, in the Western world, we made it popular. We made it fun. But to be a shepherd in the ancient world, you had to deal with thieves, robbers. Are you hearing me? Uh, 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 wolves. Huh? All these things. I want you to think about it. Being a shepherd. I want to take y'all back, your mind back there. Just think about it. And the larger your flock is, the more under shepherds you need. Are y'all hearing me? Yes, sir. And so shepherd is a dangerous job. Uh, why do you think the man, why do you think he had the stick? Well, because he couldn't walk or something? No. Huh? He, listen, the shepherd had to put himself in a position where he could oversee the flock. And so as he put himself in a position, he's watching. He's watching the flock. And, and one thing about the shepherd is that that the sheep don't lead the shepherd. I want y'all to catch that. The sheep, Mike, don't lead the shepherd. The, the shepherd walks in front of the sheep, and the sheep hears the voice of the shepherd, and they follow the shepherd. So that's why Yahshua say, listen, my sheep, they hear my voice, and they do what? They follow me. So shepherd is not a, a easy job. Because, now, there are benefits in shepherd. But a shepherd has to know where the green pasture is. I'm going to show you how this applies. The shepherd has to know, he has to send other sheep or other shepherds to go find green pasture. So he realized that he can't gaze too long in one place. He had to make sure the sheep need plenty of water. He got to have water. They got to have nutrients. All these things that a sheep need. So therefore a shepherd has to know his flock. So if a sheep only getting one nutrient like faith, I mean, how long can you teach about it? I mean, you know, no church should be called a faith church. That's all they've been eating for 20 years. Faith, 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 faith. No, no, no. It has to have diet. The, the, the sheep have to have different nutrients and, and vitamins, all of these things. And so for us in the Western world, we don't know what shepherding is. We don't. I'm going to show you a verse here. Uh, let's turn to a, a verse right quick. Give me my glasses. I'm going to show you something here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Go to the book of Proverbs. Book of Proverbs. Book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 27. 
Watch this here. Because I want us to understand the job of a shepherd. Because if you don't understand the job of a shepherd. That's it. Look at what verse 23 says. Verse 23. Mike, you got it. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, mm-hmm. and to look well into thy herds. What's it? Be what, Mike? Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flock, uh huh, and to look well into thy herds. Look at that. That's what he's talking about. This book all about shepherd. He said, "Be diligent." So that means he got to be involved in the sheep life. Am I right? Okay. He got to be aware of what's going on. Why? Because it's his from. His responsibility to feed the sheep, protect them from the wolves and the goats and all these things. Very important. So he said, what? Be diligent. So the shepherd has to know what's going on. Because if the sheep is not following rights, you know, it, 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 something is, is, is going on in the sheep life. Because sheep is not going to lay down. When, when King David say, and he make me to lie down in green pastures, the reason that it is, the only that sheep will lay down is is they're at ease because sheep can assist things so when a sheep is at ease they can lie down that's probably why some of you ain't sick of doing that see because if Yah is our shepherd ought to be able to lay down he give his beloved sheep am I right so there's other reasons that sheep won't lay down it's because of anxiety all this biblical Another one is fear. So it's up to the shepherd to make sure that the sheep has a good environment to come in and to be fed. Yeah. So all that weak stuff, because I'm like, man, I don't even want to be no pastor if I'm going to be like that. Because I know the life of a shepherd, ancient shepherds. They fight. The first scene we saw of Moses was doing what? Kicking butt, didn't he? Huh? I got a book. I didn't bring it out, Mike. It, it, it's called The Shepherd and the King. And notice that one of the greatest uh, kings was a shepherd. King David. And notice the value of a, 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 a shepherd. That if he sees that a, a sheep is being attacked, what do the shepherd do? He go out to the one who's doing attacking. Am I right? David said, this is about talking. I know I have plenty of sheep. No, 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 no. That's my daddy's sheep. David went and got the sheep. So a shepherd has to be willing to fight for the flock. The flock that's in the house, not the flock that leaves. They on their own. I'm not serious. Yeah. They on their own. Right. They left the safety. Right. Now, one thing between the sheep and a goat, goats eat anything. Them two, now, watch this. A sheep must be led. A goat is independent. Though, watch it, though he's smarter than the sheep, but his life is short. Oh yeah, I got books to prove this here. So I, 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 I mean, the, a goat, yeah. And then, watch it, if a sheep, a goat has the ability to draw a sheep away. That's why the shepherd has to watch. I'm telling you, this is powerful. I got the book to prove all this stuff. That's why you have church split. So you don't understand that I can, I can, I can quote script after script. Moses say, "Don't lead the people without shepherd." Moses, the greatest teacher in Israel, is in our history. If Moses thought the people need a shepherd, they could have said, "Moses, this I brought y'all this for y'all on your own." No, he didn't. Then the greatest teacher in, in our history, the Mushia, Matthew 9, 35, said he saw the people and said, uh-oh, the people are sheep without a sheep. This is what the Messiah says. Go to John. John. John chapter 21. Oh, 
Say John, right? Mm -hmm. Let's pick it up in verse 15. Verse 15. So when they had dined, Yeshua said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? Uh -huh. He said unto him, Yeah, yo, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. Mm. Oh, yeah. He said to him again the second time, Son, son of Jonah, no. lovest thou me? No. And he said unto him, no. Yeah, Lord, no. thou knowest I love thee. No. And he said unto him, Feed yes, my sheep. No. He said unto him the third time, no. Son, son of Jonas, thou lovest me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Thou lovest me. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest Mama. all things. Mama. Thou knowest Mama. that I love thee. Mama. And she was said unto him, Feed my sheep. Mama. Very, very, I say unto thee. Okay, that's good. So notice what Yeshua, now he's turning the flock over to, Mama. to uh, Peter. Mama. One of the greatest things, Mama. though, or the challenge for a leader, Mama. such as here at the house of study, is turning the flock over no. to a leader. No. As great as Joshua was, Joshua did not raise up someone to replace him. So he was a great general, but who did he raise up? So the challenge here at the house of study is raising up someone that will be the sheep. Very important. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. This is not an easy time in these days that we're in, guys. Because of the pandemic that's happening before us, the sheep can become a prey. Mm -hmm. The sheep can become a prey. This is what the Most High says in Jeremiah 3.15. Amen. Amen. And I will give you pastures according to my heart. Uh huh. We shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Notice that. That's what the Most High do. A shepherd. Say, I will give you a shepherd after my own heart. Well, anyone that knows the Hebrew knows that he you know, the Torah. Because the people has to be led by the Torah. Yeah. One of the things is this is when I the more I look into the ancient world of, of uh, shepherding and look at what we have done in America, it's terrible. That's why the sheep has gone astray. Look at Acts. Just trying to give you a Acts chapter 20. This is Paul dealing with the church and current. And he began to teach them something before he leaves. We'll pick it up in verse 27, Mike. Acts chapter 20, verse 27. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of Elohim. Take heed therefore unto yourselves uh -huh. and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, hath made you overseer mm -hmm. to feed the church of Elohim which he hath purchased with his own blood. Why would Paul be so concerned? Think about this. Paul is concerned. Why are we not concerned in the 21st century? Yahshua is concerned. Yahweh is concerned. Moses is concerned. <laughs> huh? Peter is concerned. Paul is concerned. Go ahead. Take heed unto thyself over with the rock and death has made you overseer and feed, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, mm -hmm. not sparing the flock. Mm -hmm. Also of your own self shall men arise, speaking for perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Mm -hmm. Therefore watch. 
and remember that by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to Elohim and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Okay, so the point I want to bring out here that Paul, knowing that he is going to leave this earth. And so I'm aware of my humanity. I know I'm going to be out of here. And so why would not? You know, I, you know am I worried and concerned? Uh, yeah, as a shepherd. Daddy? And who's going to lead the flock? Daddy? You know, uh, who's going to be the block? And so that's why I try to set a high standard in the house and tell y'all what to look for. Come on. Okay? To be on God. Uh, you know, pray that the Most High will send someone that will be able to be teachable. Because I know that I'm only here for a season. So I'm aware of that. So Paul and the apostles, I mean, if Yeshua knew that his day was coming, Paul knew his day was coming. You know, if someone asks me, Pastor, if something happened to you, who's on? I don't know. I don't know. So I pray that if you, you know, that the Most High, if it's, if it's not someone already here, that the Most High will send us someone. But if not, you just get to a reason for a portion. You can't get lost like that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, just get to the Torah portion. Right. Thank you. This is just real. I ain't about to, you know, I don't know. I ain't nobody promised tomorrow. I'm just being real. Okay? Being real. Um, I'm going to go with another place. Okay, John. John, chapter 10. Oh, we're going to get the road. Because after this verse, then I'll show you the next one. Okay, Mike, let's pick it up in John chapter uh, 10, verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entered not by the door into the sheep hole, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entered by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the porter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. When he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth forth, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger will will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Yeshua unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then Yeshua said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Mm -hmm. I am come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth the life for the sheep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now, I just want to bring up something. Now, did that say, in verse 10, did it say, and the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy? But many times, how many of us are guilty of quoting a verse like that? Mm -hmm. Because why? Because we were sheep, and that's how we heard it. But this whole context is talking about shepherd. It's taken, it's taken from Ezekiel chapter 34. So Yeshua is trying to teach them something between the good shepherd and the shepherd who's only doing something because he's getting paid. So on your own time, read Ezekiel chapter 34. But he said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. Verse 12, Mike. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeing the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. Mm -hmm. The hireling fleeth, because he's not, because he is an hireling, mm -hmm. and careth not for the you sheep. You only get paid. 
I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, mm -hmm. and I am known of mine. Mm, it's powerful. Now, the lesson today is going to be coming from the book of Numbers chapter 16. But keep in mind that we're still dealing with apostate from the book of Jude. <laughs> Jude is a book, in the Greek, Judas is dealing with last day apostate. Okay, guys, I'm aware of all the information out there on YouTube, Facebook, all that stuff that's out there. But those who do not have a shepherd will end up in a cult. Many places they are not to be. So the lesson today is called, is dealing with Numbers chapter 16, Korah, you're not the shepherd. Watch this here. So Jew, those who have been following him, Jew is warning about last day apostate. And then Jew used three individuals to bring out his point. He could use many. So he used Cain, remember Cain, and then second, Balaam. And remember, I said apostate is those that used to walk in a certain way, but now don't walk that way, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's very important that we understand that. So then I gave you first. Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, what Shaul say, take heed, he that think he stand, he should fall. So don't think that you can't fall away. Because Judas, seeing the miracles, seeing lives raised from the dead, fell away. We talked about the angels who was right there in the presence of the Most High. They fell away. Think about that. So that's that should be an awakening to us, man. How do I think I'm there? Because even though I, that's my wife, I got son, this, I'm their daddy, I'm the pastor, they can follow me too. We got an example. Eli's boys fell away. So we cannot be thinking that we're safe. So Jude tells us now, keep yourself, he says. Keep yourself what? In the love of God. So we have to guard yourself, keep yourself. Very important. You cannot put yourself in position. We used to have a, a young lady that went here, and then she started dealing and dabbling into Orthodox Judaism. Now she sold her house, got a divorce, and moved to Israel. I'm like, how can you honor this kind of teaching? Because you're a sheep. You've been eating in other pastures. See, sheep. One thing about sheep, when they feel fear, they get together. That's how they cook and each other. They come together. At nighttime, the reason that they come together is because they're wolves, they keep each other warm. See how they see them? We come with each other. That's why he, he used sheep. Because we know that we need each other. At nighttime, when it's time for sheep, and you can have sheep, ain't nothing wrong with goats because you do a sacrifice on the goat. So ain't nothing wrong with goats. <laughs> but if you separate the sheep from the goat, you, you must look at the character of the goat. You know what I'm saying? He, he's in everybody's yard. He don't care about nothing. You know what I'm saying? His life is short. Yes, he live a, he's smart, yeah, but his life is short. Uh, but at nighttime, this road, when it's time for them to lay down, you separate the sheep. From the goat, why? Because the goat ain't got, ain't got no skin. He can't keep nobody warm. You see? He can't keep nobody warm. I mean, so we can learn a lot. I'm I'm studying my book now, but it's like it's, it's, it's a lot because I realized that we we're missing the whole point. We we're missing the whole point. I remember when uh and uh, our, our brother uh, Joseph was told uh, when he sent uh, uh, our other brothers, Jacob did send them to shook them to feed the flock. And then so one day our uh, uh, father, Yaakov, said, listen, Joseph, go check on the flock. And then the scripture wanted us to know, and, and, and so Joseph went, and the scripture wanted to know, I think it's 37 verse 12, say, and, 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 and Joseph went to watch to check on the father flock. That was the text wanted us to know. The father flock. Now watch this, this is very important. Because when you out there watching over the flock, it's the father flock. I don't care how hungry you get. You ain't got no permission to kill nothing. Huh? You have no... You can't kill nothing. 
Jacob, our father Jacob, when he was in captivity in Laban's house, he told Laban when he was coming back home, and then Laban pursued him like he was a criminal. Oh yeah, Laban, always remember him, Laban. And so Jacob, when he called him, he said, listen, man, I served you for 20 years. When, when, when you lost a lamb, I provided for it. I took the loss. I was in there in cold and heat. I did all this. Why are you pursuing me like I'm a criminal? So Joseph, Jacob said, listen, man, I, I, I earned this here. And you changed my wages 10 times. Yes, he So we can see that shepherd man is, is a big time job here. Big time job. Now, let's go to numbers. Now, one thing that I want y'all to understand too is that in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12, it said, For when the time comes, you ought to be what? Teachers. We still need someone to teach you. I, do, I know I can give Brother Rome to quote that verse because he took a apostle class. Brother Rome, you still know that verse? Those verses? <laughs> but he, he did memorize in class. Yeah. But but the writer of Hebrew brings out say, well, well, when the time comes, you all that he teaches. But you need someone to teach you again the very fundamental principle. Huh? He said, then he goes on and say this, he say, he say, milk is for babies. He, he, he showed them everything strong, you know what I'm saying? Meat is for those who are mature. He, this is what the writer of Hebrew said. So this teaching here is not for babies. See, when I was putting it in my mind, I say this is like a movie that is it, it requires your parents to be there. Because this is all teaching right here. This is all teaching right here. And so Numbers chapter 16, this is what I want y'all. I'm about to be This is what I want y'all to understand. We say that we are the people of the book, hands down, bar none. Am I right? Then our our action as a community, as a family, is this place. This place before the world. Look how we act before our God. Oh yeah, we the people, but look how we act before our God. So when people open this book and say, "Man, y'all deserve to be punished," you so right. Amen. See, we don't like to hear that. Through all, all our journey, our forefather gave Moses hell after hell after hell. And ain't nothing changed to date. We still give our leaders hell out the hell out there. Why? Because it's in our DNA. Oh, I ain't even got to put on my glasses. I already know things. Number chapter 16. I want us to see that. Now, when you open up the biblical text, I want you to understand what Shaul said, Romans 15, 4. So, most of the things are written, was written for our learning, that through patience and comfort, we can have hope. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6 and 11 says the same thing. So when I open this text, it's, it's we're reading history. And we say in English, the people that don't know the history will repeat it. Am I right? That's right? So this book is about us. So when the nations open the book, they say, man, these people are still that rebellious people. To this very day. So right here is one I would call one of the greatest, almost the greatest church split. Because y'all do know, according to Acts, that this was the ecclesia in the in the wood, right? This is the church, the kohal, bought with the price, the blood of the lamb. Amen. So now we have a incident that's what's it, recorded in the ancient text for all to read. This book is given to us so that we can know, do not behave like that. Amen. Amen. So it's called scripture for a reason. That what part of the script do you play? It's called script for a reason. So what part of the script do you play? So now we have an incident that many incidents happen, but the ruach won't this one right here. He won't this one to be in the book. So we won't forget this here. Numbers chapter 16, pick up in verse 1. Watch this here. Now Korah the son of Esau, the son of Koath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, and the son of Peleth, the sons of Reuben, took men. Uh -huh. And they rose up before Moshe with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes mm. of the assembly, mm. famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moshe and against Aaron. 
and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and Jehovah is among them. Now, you need to understand this dialogue that's happening. This was a build-up. What brought Korah to the point that he just couldn't take it no more? Once you do your study, you'll see that this incident, because the Torah is not written free in all. Amen. We believe, perhaps, after he just saw Aaron put on that inauguration, at inauguration chapter 9, he just lost it. He just couldn't take it no more. Are you hear me? Yeah. Have y'all ever saw some people that he just, she got a what, a raise? Oh, I just can't take it no more. Oh, huh? Yeah. I mean, I'm just, just, listen, Cora just couldn't take it no more. Now, remember, Cora and Moses, they are king folks. You think your king folks all excited because you got a brand new car? No. You think your king folks happy because now you went from an apartment to a house? I'm trying to help somebody here today. Huh? Your friends will congratulate you more than your family will. Cora had enough. I don't want the boy just had enough. But when I look at Cora's name, the, the cook, the rich, and the hate. Y'all should recognize that, right? She should recognize it to the cook right here in the ancient. This is how we spoke, y'all. That that's that's aromatic. That's not bad, but that's when we came out of captivity. But this is the picture graph. Well, we wrote in English, we say that a picture is worth a you can be able to look at a name and tell you what it represents. So we have the cook which is like the rising of the sun drawing away of the darkness from the light, right? Then we have the rest, which is the head. It can mean head, rest, top, or beginning. Then we have the, the word hey, which means behold and to look. Now, what's interesting that in Hebrew, that the heart of the word is always the middle. It's hard to word. So the heart of the word is the middle. So in reality, Korah wanted to be the head. Huh? See how the word telling on him? Korah wants to be the head. But he's not the head. He's a Levite. And we're going to see that Moses is going to put him in check. All right. So Korah, but what's this? Korah wants to be the head. And then the draw is the cook, means to draw. Korah has the ability to, to draw people. Mm. Huh? He has people to draw people. But Karen, if you look at the word in, 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 in the Hebrew, you look at like 71. 31, 71, 40 is the same word for uh, uh, to draw near, like the sacrifice. So Moses is going to use the word, they say, listen, God called you, Cor, to draw near to him. So he has this ability to draw people. You say, how do you know? He just draw 250 people? Oh, I've been doing this for, listen, I ain't my no I'm my ruler. Yeah. Look up uh, of the influence. And because he has the influence to draw people, that's why the service is called Korah, you're not the leader. See, just because you have the ability to draw people, don't make you the head. Amen. The name is the same word. Am I right? That's right. I'm sure to you. What is it? 1731? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure you in the ancient. Right here, yeah, same word. So, in its root, it means draw near. So, when you see words that have the two, uh, two words, the two, three together, it means that there's some kind of connection. Okay, the connection. So, in both of them, the one she's reading, it has what a cook, a cook, and a rash, and what a bet. Uh huh. Okay. Uh -huh. So, but it's showing that there is a connection. Right. Now, I can even go deeper if I if I uh, 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 want to do this here. If you put his name in the gematria or or add his name up, it adds up to three hundred five. Okay, it adds up three hundred five because in Hebrew we use numbers to count. So we got three hundred five. Now watch this here. So when you go to numbers, right? When you go. And you find numbers that match each other, there is a connection. This, this is what it's called in the Hebrew, it's called the, the mystery teaching. As Yeshua says, it has been given to you to know the mystery, the soul, the, yes. huh? The Pasha. Yes. Hallelujah. See, that, that deep. I saw it on the board. I don't know who, who uh, wrote it on the board. Is that what you did that? 
I said, oh, some, somebody know what's going on out here. So that's deep teaching right there. That's why Joe said the deep, or someone said deep, call it the deep. Yes, hallelujah. I remember what my sister said, man, my brother, deep. Get in the water, swim. Yes. You just want to get your feet wet? But when I look, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to give you one. So when you look at the uh, 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 the uh, uh, name, it adds up to 305. So the first time is you. I'm going to show you something here. Let's go to Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. So I'm counting, right? This is how we do it. And Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. I'm just going to just give you one, then we're going to get back. So this added up. <clears throat> it says, verse 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. No, verse 11. I'm sorry. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. And Elohim said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit yielding, yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Mm -hmm. So now in that is, is in the grass. When I, well, I should have ordered that, but I didn't. But this text is dealing with the seed producer out this kind. If anyone wants to see it, I can sh show it to you out the class. But it's dealing with in your kind. So when you think about, it, as you turn back to the numbers, what's going on? That seed produced out this kind, right? right. So Noah, or not Noah, Korah was able to draw 250 people out of this kind. Wow. Huh? Wow. Huh? Out of this kind. Am I right? You're right. Birds of feather? Well, I mean, Come on now. But the Torah is deep. So we see Korah has the ability to draw people. Why? It's in his DNA. It's in it. But he's going about it the wrong way. And he's drawing leaders. And you notice that it mentions Reuben. Now, if you look at the tabernacle, I'm right there. On the tabernacle, uh, 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 Korah, because the, the Levites are set around the tabernacle, and it just happened to be Korah and, 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 and Reuben, tribe, it's, it's on the same side. Huh? On the same, uh, am I right? On, on the same side. So now, what you think, what is, what you think Reuben Isha is? Reuben Isha go all the way back to Genesis, because he was the firstborn. Huh? See? That stuff can fly, because it can be some stuff that happened in your life that you didn't even know that your uncle did. And you wonder like, why so so don't like me? Because your uncle slept with his mom. And you wonder why that family don't, don't say it. Hallelujah. Am I right? That's right. Hallelujah. So Reuben, you know what I'm saying? Reuben, now, 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 they ain't gonna bring up what Reuben did is sleeping with his daddy, you know what I'm saying? Talking about, you know, but not now. So this stuff follows. So Reuben you know, has an issue. And so, listen, if you got an issue, watch this here, because we did it with Moses, right? If you got an issue with the leader, somebody gonna find it. That, that's why it's very important, because I'm telling you. Somebody can come in here and you can have a slight issue with the pastor and somebody can break it out of you. Like, oh, yeah, you see it too? Because they come and say, Moses, the, the first argument was Moses, you take too much of That was their first argument. Who do you think? Why y'all let him do everything about me? I want you to think about this. This is what's going on. This is. I want you to preach it. This is the church. The church in the wilderness. They are cousins. And it's amazing that people that's close to you think that they can come up and say anything to you. I, 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 I always have to mention this here. I, I, I see this as an old cowboy movie. <laughs> because I don't remember, because I don't know, the cowboy, they just, the town, they didn't have enough. They knew it was coming to it. They knew it was coming to it. This, this was going on. So to say, you take too much upon yourself. I'm thinking like, you forgot about Moses? This is the Moses that's in Numbers at the 12. Moses said, listen, I turned, you didn't see what he did to my sister, leopard? You forgot about that? I know that. I know you had to hear about that in the community. Why? Because we had to wait seven days before she left. 
before we left. So I know he had to know about that. But when you stubborn, when you got the big heads, this dude had no. Now, you already know that Moses didn't choose his self. Y'all already know that Moses tried to get out of that job how many times? Huh? They don't know that pastor. He wanted a job. Listen, man, I told him, get out of this city. Now, notice, he come against Aaron and Moses. Who chose Moses? Yeah. Who chose Aaron? Yeah. So who are we really coming against? Yeah. You see? Oh, you didn't see nothing. What is that? They, they Go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. We're going to go. We're going to go. We're going to go. Because Israel, <laughs> I want to get back into the land. And we can't take this kind of attitude back in the land. That's right. <laughs> we can't take this back in the land because the land was bumming us out again. We'd be back on the slave ship again. Man, come on, y'all. Come on, man. man. That's why I say, man, God, let's go see how God is going to say, let's get it over and repent it. Let's go get this thing going. For real. Amen. Man, come on now. For real. Romans chapter 13, start at verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. Now, some souls. Every soul. Not the Hebrew Israelites. Every soul. So that means us too, right? Go ahead. Right. For there is no power but Elohim. The powers that be ordained of Elohim. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of Elohim. Don't we know Israel got order? Uh-huh. We're the only people that Moshe say, Name of people uh-huh. would have heard the voice of Yah as you have and live. Uh-huh. Moses say, Name of people that got a Torah like you. He said, This is your wisdom uh-huh. in the sight of all nations. So out of that, our fathers didn't take it to him. Come on. So we have a chance to undo what they did. Yes, sir. But we can't look in the same book and say, you know what? We're under grace. Because we're going to see the story. And the ground ain't going to open the spot of grace. So these guys, these leaders, I'm not leaders. Can you imagine what was going on? Can you imagine? Everybody said, uh-oh. Because you know you got to know. Listen, white people nerve knows it. Y'all know we know what was going on. Uh-huh. We talking about tabernacle. All the people, you don't think the dust was coming up and they like, uh-oh, it's, it's on today. <laughs> on that side of the camp, I guarantee that's all they were talking about. Uh-huh. And remember, most straight camp was outside them, wasn't it? So they had to go out there. These boys cold to come Oh, I can imagine the part of the hood ain't had nothing on them. <clears throat> they punched Can you imagine? 250 people. That's a lot of people, man, coming towards your house. And their first argument was, you take too much upon yourself. What was their second argument? Watch this. Number chapter 16. Ye take too much upon your, yourselves. Uh huh. Seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and Jehovah is among them, wherefore then ye lift yourselves up above the congregation of Jehovah. Wait a minute. So now he throw a little truth in there. We all are kadosh. We all are set apart. Yeah, that's true. But what he does understand, or you might not know, in Hebrew, there's two words for set apart in Hebrew. Well, not two words, but the same word. It's the same word for a holy. For a prostitute, kadosh. Say it can be used for a prostitute, a holy. Did you know that? So, yes, we are set upon. But he's not acting like he's set upon. Isn't he? He's not acting like he's set upon. He, he has no fear. Like Jew, I can take you back to Jew, but we're not going now. When Jews was dealing with the, uh, 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 Michael was dealing with the archangel, and they're going back at it about the body of Moses, and then Jews say, no, nah. I mean, uh, Michael said, no, nah. Yahweh rebuke thee. But then Jews say, no, nah. these have no fear. They speak evil of dignity. That's the last day of apostate. They're going to talk about leaders. Jews say, 
This is Latter-day Apostles. They're going to talk about leaders like they're dogs. Amen. They have no fear. He say they, they sport around you. They eat in your feasts. It's powerful what you bring us out. So in Numbers again, Numbers chapter 16. Go ahead, Mike. And when Moshe heard it, he fell upon his face. That's the first thing a leader needs to do. Watch. Moses is my perfect example. That's why I don't strike the rock. Moses is, is a lesson. So that's why I cannot. If you was working me up to the point where I'm about to go New Jack City or go old school, I would actually leave. I would actually leave. I said that the other day in class. And I said, if, if, if you work me up, well, I just can't. No, 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 no. I would actually leave. Before I say something that I got to apologize for. Because I already know who called me. I said, my, a leader should never have to prove this position. It's like me trying to prove that's my wife. You understand? You don't have to prove that you're a pastor. You don't have to prove none of that stuff. You just stand in your authority. You've been here 10, 10 years by his grace. You had many times, many times, brother, what's I'm like, you Because it's, it's not easy, you know, because people say they don't despise small beginning, but they do. If we had a thousand people in here, people would act that way. Why? Because I got my boys up front, you know what I'm saying? Got my bouncers. I don't call them bouncers. <laughs> but the reason that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm five, seven, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm like, oh, man, we can beat them up. We can take them. <laughs> but you see here how we have a lesson here Moses. The scripture tells us in Numbers, remember this? It said, Numbers, Moses was the most meekest man on the earth. And meekness does not mean weak. Yes, Having the ability to sustain us. And Moses could easily just, huh? Come on. We about Moses who killed the Egyptian. We talk about Moses that fought, huh? He ain't no punk. Moses know how to fight. I mean, I come from the area of 1993 NWA. Don't think I don't know how to throw it down. Amen. But I surrender my hands to him. I surrender my mouth to him. So we see here that core. You take too much upon yourself. The congregation is holy. Moses, as a leader, he did what a leader is supposed to do. Humble himself. Go before the Most High. What are you doing? Praying. What is he praying? Really? Really? Father, praying, God, don't take him out. Go ahead. And when Moshe heard it, he fell upon his face. Uh -huh. And he spake unto Korah and said unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow, Jehovah will show who are his. Now, this is going to be smooth right here. Because Moses know their heart ain't right. And so Moses is going to set them up by prayer. Because he know that God is not going to listen to their prayers. That's why their heart ain't right. The same way people say, listen, Husband, don't be on with your wife like that because God ain't going to hear your prayer. Amen. So Moses said, okay, tomorrow we have a prayer meeting. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> if that was a bunch of dookie going on in the house, we have a prayer meeting. Uh -huh. That's how you get rid of all that flesh stuff. Amen. That's all it is flesh. Amen. That's all it is flesh. <laughs> so they said, okay, let's have a prayer meeting then. We'll see who who God prayer is going to answer. Go ahead. But set him up. And who is holy and will cause him to come near unto him? Huh? Even him who he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. He used the root word of his name twice. To come near. See how the word played like that? It's so weird. To come near. Go ahead. Watch how Moses break it down to him. This do. Uh -huh. Take you censors, core and all his company, and put fire in them, and put incense in them before Jehovah tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it shall be the man whom Jehovah doth chose, he shall be holy. Now, now, now don't underestimate this. They're actually going to pray. One heart is right with Yah. One heart ain't right, but he's going to prayer. How many people come to prayer mean the heart ain't right? Mm -hmm. 
They ain't spoke, Sister Mary and Sister Anne ain't spoke in months. Huh? Because right. why? Because she got mad because she wanted to bring pounds of some chicken and Sister Mary beat her. Amen. Now, y'all think I'm making them niggas, but stuff happens like that, man. <laughs> stuff happens like that. These guys, see, when you got the big head, you don't even know that you've been set up. You've been set up at a prep meet. What's that prep meet? And most say, okay, let's go to prep meet. Because what? Most say, my relationship right with God. And I got in the situation. I said, I said, you know, I ain't did nothing. Huh? Judge, judge the situation. Amen. Judge the situation. I feel like Samuel. What? Who money I took? Who? Who goat I took? Because I thought name was What? Who I done wrong? Uh -huh. That's it. Amen. I thought name was done I felt like Samuel. <laughs> I ain't took nobody's stuff. <laughs> yeah. Amen. You judge the situation, and I live it alone. Yeah. That's why a leader got to keep his hands clean. So that when I stand up here, the power, the anointing comes. Oh, yeah. I don't have no conviction like that. You know, no, no condemnation. You got to keep your hands clean. The scripture says in Romans that Yeshua had, had, had power according to the spirit of holiness. On, Boy, don't think holy life ain't what? Oh. That's power in holiness. That you're not sitting there watching pornography, doing those things. Oh, yeah, all the things that men do. Chasing women are all the things that pastors do. Yeah, they do. Huh? That's why I say, y'all are my, y'all are my thermometer. You come in and say, Pastor, something all right. So I'm saying, I can't speak to no other pastor, but if, if you see something ain't right with me, you love me enough. Huh? I don't like them friends say, you know what, I started to say something. Mm. I'm giving everybody the permission. All right. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, don't come to me sound like the way you do. I don't know what the salvation is going to So now, go, right? So, we're dealing with this here. Go ahead, Mike. Ye take too much upon yourselves. See how you re reverse it. Ye sons of Levi. Uh huh. And Moshe said unto Kor, Here I pray you, ye sons of Levi. Seemeth but a small thing unto you that Elohim of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of Jehovah, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto him? That's what he's saying. What? You think he still used the word, pray, to draw near. Now we got over two million people in the wilderness. He chose the Levites. Yes. And to draw near to bring the offer to the people. He uh -huh. said, You think this? Hallelujah. I can hear the psalmist say, Huh? I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God Hallelujah. than the dwell of the tenth of wicked. Cause, see, that's why I say, You got to know your position. You got to know what you've been called to do. If not, you're going to get confused. But Moses is going to tell him what his real issue is. Go ahead. And he that brought thee near to him, uh -huh. and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and ye seek the priesthood. Oh, also. that's what the problem is. Huh? He wants the praises. He wants Aaron clothing. Do you see that? It wasn't enough. Hey, hey, he tired of wearing that one white outfit. He want the one with the breastplate on him, right? Huh? Oh, yeah. That's what he want. Huh? Think about it. It's right there. It's right there in the book. He want the priesthood. Your brother don't do nothing but once a year go to the Holy Holy. We out here doing all this cutting and, and all. You know what I'm saying? That's what you look at. Because what? The Levites was given to Aaron to serve. Am I right? That's right. That's right. To serve. Amen. That's These right. boys getting paid. They getting paid. They getting the best food. Mm -hmm. But they ain't satisfied with that. That's the big head. He got the big head. Moses, a leader, can, Moses pointed out. Oh, you want to put it here. I keep telling y'all the leader got to have eyes. Yeah. I see 
things. I ain't asking y'all to take away my stutter, and I want my stutter to be a stumbling block for people. Don't, don't change my speech. Let it be like that. So it'll be a stumbling block, say. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can talk better than that. See, you don't recognize anointing. That's right. About right. That's right. Hallelujah. Moses said, You see the priesthood. Aaron didn't make himself a priest, did anybody? No, he didn't. No, no. Moses didn't choose Aaron. We know when Moses, when, when Aaron got chosen, right? right? When they was having a debate. He said, okay, 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 Moses, okay. You're playing with me right now, okay, okay. But right now, I'm going to let your brother be your spokesman. It wasn't that Moses could not talk. It wasn't that Moses stuttered. That, that ain't what Stephen said. Stephen said Moses was mighty in words. Moses didn't have no stuttering problem. I can prove that. Oh, no. Acts chapter 7, read it. Moses was mighty in words, great spoken. In all history, there arose no prophet like Moses. So, call the witness seeking the priesthood. Go ahead. For which cause both of you all and all thy company are gathered together against Jehovah. And what is Aaron that he murmured against him? Mm -hmm. Man, isn't that something though? So he found enough people in the leader. So you know what? I know you should be the, the priest. It's the congregation. He didn't get no lay people to say noun, renown. The word now, I guarantee you, is is is, is Shema or Shem, meaning name, renown, Shem. People of known reputation. And they all agree because he wanted the priesthood, right? So he got 250 people to agree with him. It's like they're going to take the priesthood. We're going to vote Aaron out. And Moses said, who is Aaron? And that remind me, I said, bam. Soon I heard, I said, oh, that remind me of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. When Paul said, who is Paul? Who is Silas? Who is Kepha? So he's seeking the priesthood. Go ahead, Mike. And Moshe sent to call Dathan and Abiram and the sons of Eli, uh -huh. which said, we will not come up. What did? We got here. Now, here's the situation that happened. So now Moses moved from talking to him, said, okay, let's deal with this whole issue. Get them, he sent somebody to get them, and they had the adapt to say, they ain't coming. Look, look at this, this what's going on in the church. We get to read about it. The pastor wanna see y'all, tell them I ain't coming. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Are y'all hearing this? Boy, he used to always repeat himself. It should happen years ago before many of y'all came and so the young man I had teaching, I gave him my Shabbat because I was teaching on Mondays and Thursdays, the same way I'm doing now. So I was like, okay, I saw a little tension. So I gave him Shabbat this day. I always do it. I'm just going to tell y'all. I always do stuff to hang people. <laughs> I do, I do, I do, I do. And uh, and so somehow he didn't have 250 people. He only had a few people. And Lord, you know, I don't want to get sidetracked, but that was incredible. And so I said, you know, man, I said, uh, let me talk to you after class. And then so he said, okay. And then after class, he said, well, I ain't gonna be able to. To stay uh, uh, and, and to talk to you. I said, Well, but what I'm about to say ain't gonna take long. Sit down. <laughs> You're not teaching no more. And I mean, that was it. There was no debating and talking. No, 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 no. Because you listen to the people, and that was dangerous. That was dangerous. And our Torah warned us about that. Aaron, listen to the people. You can't be a leader 
listen to the people. You cannot allow the people. If y'all say you continue to do it, I don't care. You have to stand alone. Amen. So, go, uh, go ahead. So now, they won't come, right? This is what these guys say. So, no, no, tell Moses that we're not coming. Is it a small thing that thou have brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey? No, oh my goodness. See, when you are naive, you say crazy stuff. They just call Egypt the land of flowing and milk and honey. If that's the case, then go back to the other churches. You thought it was a land of flowing and milk and honey. Egypt was a place of bondage. Come on, man. Well, see, when I was at that other church, See, we're trying to bring it back to our 21st century. At the other church. If you thought the other church was that good, then why are you here? Amen. So when your mind is, 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 is gone and you just bound on rebellion, you'll call evil good. Amen. Huh? That's wrong. Yeah. They call it the land of Egypt where we was watering the ground with our feet. The house of bondage. Throwing our children in the alligators. When you call you that mad at the leader that you call Egypt? With the most high name three or four times the house of bondage? Until we stop calling America the land of the free, the home, the brave, we ain't ready to go home. We still want some America stuff. We still want some America stuff. I say, they ain't crying out to me. They crying out to the Republicans. They crying out to the Democrats. They crying out to the White House. They ain't crying out to me. Hallelujah. They not. They marching, hoping that man make a change. But watch all those service, all those marches. Go to some. Those marches and ask me, come back and write a report. Ask me, did you hear this word? Repent! Repent! Bet you ain't gonna hear that out there. They gonna stone you. You wonder why y'all ain't heard our marches? Look where you marching to. Y'all say, march your butt to the church house. And and uh the shot if you want I'd listen to it, but maybe somebody can verify with me. Why he didn't get up there? Did he get up there and say, Israelites? Is there any, any Hebrew Israelites in the house? No, no, no. Then get right with Yah. He's still the same old stuff. Same old stuff. Nothing's gonna change for us until we turn back to our God. Thank you. Oh, All that foolishness. Somehow. I don't see nowhere in our history that Daniel and the Hebrew boys got together and said, listen, let's march to Nezah and tell them let us go. I don't see them get, got together in Egypt and say, let's march to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh. Let's, no, they do none of that. They cried out to their God. Hallelujah. Oh, they did. Yeah. The pattern is right here. Why are we trying to make up a recipe that don't exist in our book? You know why they won't cry out to God? Because why? They got to change their life. Yes. Yes. See why? Because in that crowd, you got homosexual, lesbian, yes. and nobody repenting. Fornication, adultery, all yes. that. Yes. If you don't believe me, go out there and start to talk about righteousness and holiness. Huh? You see? That don't mean nothing. That's a counterfeit. That's a counterfeit. Nothing gonna come out of that. For those people who know that God. You see? We know what we're supposed to be doing. Are you gonna march? Yeah, I'm gonna march. Right through the Shabbat. <laughs> you know, on, right through the Shabbat. You ain't going to stand with us. You ain't read in our book. Moses said, who's on your side? Who's on your side? That's where we going to stand. Are you on our side? No. Are you on your side? 
I got a shirt I can, I can wear now. It's called, it's called God Don't Love Everybody. <laughs> I do. God Don't Love Everybody. If you don't believe me, ask Esau. Jacob, I love. Esau, I hate. Then somebody said, well, don't we'll tell him, Brother Roy, oh, well, the word really, you know, it doesn't mean hate that, that God really hates. No, no, I said, well, take him to Proverbs chapter 6, where it says, six things that y'all hate, and seven is abomination. Yeah, well. And so you tell me that, you know, hating, adultery, fornication, see, I can scroll them just like that. See, they don't know what they're talking about. Y'all does hate. Does hate. Because why? Because we are created in his image. And there should be some things that we hate. I hate sin. I hate separation. I hate divorce. How can I be created in God's image and have a book and don't hate things? They would say, I hate those who hate you. See, Christian said, oh, no, we got to love everybody. That's not our book. That's right. Come on. That's right. Please. Huh? That's right. See, that's why I don't like Christianity. Not the people, but Christianity make you soft. That's why people don't like joining. They make you soft. Go ahead, Mike. Watch, watch what else he says. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that flows with milk and honey, and to kill us in the wilderness? Except thou make thyself all together a prince over us. The same word. Where did we hear that? When Moses killed, huh? Yeah. Defended his brother, and they say, did he come back the, the next day? Did, did they say, oh, uh, who who made you a judge and prince? Oh. So now he said, you you gonna kill us? See, and I'll tell you, man, when your mind is wild. You start just saying all kind of crazy stuff. Mm. But what? But what's what he gonna say here? Moreover, if thou hast not brought us into a land that flows with milk and honey. Make up your mind, man. I thought Egypt was the land. You see how they be talking on people be devil tongue? A devil minded man is what? And how many ways? All his ways. You thought Egypt was the land, and he should just stay there. That's right. Go ahead. Or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards, will thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Oh, uh, now he's saying, watch this. Here. In English, he's saying, see now, Pastor Sherman, you got them food, but you ain't got me food. See, Moses, you got them food, but you ain't got me food. You put off the eyes of the man. Oh, oh, he said, they blind. I see, Moses, I see who you really are. Are you going to kill us too? Huh? It'd be like somebody coming from my past that yeah, you yeah, he's a good teacher, but I see who he really is. He still got that blueprint from 1983. That's right. He have not read that if any man be in Christ. He's a new creation. Huh? Yeah, he had not read that. Huh? All things that passed away and all things was he. He got that old blueprint. That's why some people can't deal with you right now. That's right. Some people that come here from old school, they see me as Lil Macy. What's up, Lil Macy? Yeah. They can't get their mind out. They can't get it out of their mind. Yeah. It's not my problem. It's their problem. That's their problem. If your family can't see you, that you're growing. Don't let your growth know. Your growth will make your family uncomfortable. Amen. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Amen. Hmm? Absolutely. You're wrong. Yep. They still saying, ain't God good. Like, I've been in that. <laughs> you ain't got past that yet? Yeah. Come on. All right. Let's go back to that. You know, you were saying that when you had a job. Mm -hmm. So, you're not going to blind us. Just look at the most. Now, you have to understand that he's speaking disrespectful to these people. Put it back in Paleo Hebrew and Tuva and Nepal, all this. Is, this is a heated conversation. Because y'all know how we talk, right? right? Go ahead. And Moshe was very wroth mm. and said unto Jehovah, Respect not thou there are. Ha 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 ha. Now, it's okay in our community for a pastor to get angry. 
at that kind of foolishness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? It's not in the book. Rap. Uh-huh. It's okay. Don't listen. That's why I don't get the religion. Religion tell you that you gotta act a certain way. Amen. But I'm glad that God didn't give us a religion. Hallelujah. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Moses was angry with that foolishness. Yeah, yeah. Someone said there's a time to be angry. Yeah. See, all this is time for everything. That's just sure answer that. <laughs> we say power on the main line. <laughs> Amen. So Moses was angered. Is it okay for a leader to be angry? For so something that ain't right and don't get right? I'm right now. I like that. Go ahead, Mike. I have not taken one ass from them. Mm-mm-mm. Neither have I hurt one of them. Come on, Moses. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before Jehovah, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow. Hey, hey, the text never tells that Moses got him anybody. Because Moses said, All I need is shot. Huh? Yeah, Moses and Aaron, go get them. Huh? Go give me some more Levi, brother. Go give me some help. Go get Joshua! My man, because Joshua don't mind fight. <laughs> Joshua, one of the brothers that made it, he just, just if you if just look, look at him wrong, he ready to fight. Let, let me get him, Joshua. Let me get him, Moses. No, Joshua, calm down, Joshua. Calm down. <laughs> I got one right there in the female. Oh, that's right. A pastor was acting up in here. A pastor was acting up in here. We had a little anniversary, whatever. And then the guy had got up and blah, 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 blah. And so, and but I I, I, I dusted it. Yeah. My name passed you out. I had my knife back. <laughs> I said, hey, Pam, you know now what's kind of spirit you under. <laughs> but my aunt is ready to defend me. I'm like, she was serious, too. She said, I ain't, all, I ain't redeemed completely yet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I always remember that. That was fine. That was okay. Okay. So he's talking to him. Notice how I, I, I want you to picture. Once the communication is gone, and that's you can be by the God. So notice how this dialogue is going on, and Moses coming to him to talk. But their attitude, after a while, Moses got angry. Moses got angry. Yeah, why? He was saying, "Why have I took for you?" Come on, I mean, what is your what is your issue? This is what Moses saying. What is your issue? And I can say that all the people that had issues with me, bring them, and y'all be the jury. Oh, y'all, I see him. So listen, go ahead, and let's see. It's gonna be a we call the heavenly host. Everybody listen to this here, and everybody can bring all your little complaints. I guarantee you, say that ain't nothing to separate on. You left on that. You left on that. Really? Well, I guess that was never the shepherd. That's all it is. That's for a job. If they were others, they would have stayed. To prove that they weren't others, they left. But if they were others, they would have stayed. That's what John said, right? We don't have time for foolishness here. We don't have time for foolishness here. And I told y'all plenty of times, to be in this congregation, you got to have some thick skin. And that's what sheep has. Thick skin. Goats can take it. Because their skin is not thick. They ain't got no fur on it. Ain't that something right there we still to learn? That's powerful right there. Go ahead, man. And take every man his censer and put incense in them. And bring ye before Jehovah every man his censer, 250 censers, mm-hmm. thou also, and Aaron, and put each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And and Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of Jehovah appeared unto all the congregation. 
And Jehovah spake unto Moshe and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O Elohim, the Elohim of the spirits, all of the Elohim of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And Jehovah spake unto Moshe, saying, Speaking to the congregation, saying, Get ye up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Mm -mm -mm. And Moshe rose up and went into Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of those wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest they be consumed with all, lest ye be consumed mm -hmm. in all their sins. That's powerful right there. So here's a bit again. Get away from them. Because why? Moses knows what's going wrong. It's going to go down. He said, if you know, in this church, get away from them. This, this most saying, if you know a situation like that, if God tells you to get away from certain people, get away from them. Because a lot of times, if the most high be trying to deal with our family members and our kids, but you keep rescuing them. I don't know why God won't change it. Because you keep rescuing them. Why? Y'all is not going to describe the righteous with the wicked. Y'all say, get away. Stop paying that bill. Stop doing that. Let me deal with them. So he was more to tell them, separate yourself. Yourself from among this congregation that I make a soon. God said, I'm going to get rid of this issue here. Notice that, that, notice how the pattern is, guys. Notice how that the whole time that y'all sit back watching. What's the pattern? Y'all sit back, let Moses deal with the issue. See, Moses knowing what y'all gonna do. So y'all sit back and say, okay, they won't listen to Moses. That's how the pattern coming. Yeah, Moses trying to solve the issue in the congregation, trying to talk to him. Then after the body, y'all say, okay, go in here, Moses. Okay. okay. It, it, it don't give it. Hey, Mike, go tell him, you know, so and so. This is Go in here, okay. Take the wrong with you. Yeah, now I, I come, it's over. No, nah, man, because he came and he came and then you would stop. It's time to go. We don't pacify, like you said, we don't pacify stuff like that. Because that stuff grows. We know the core spirit, it grows, it's a seed. And then they wonder how they had a church split. You know that God was seeking the priesthood, the pastorhood. You know he was. The things he was doing. And the most high watching the whole thing and tell Moses, otherwise God just had enough. It says that, he, I'm going to pick it up back here, uh, Mike, in uh, verse 16. And Corey got all the congregation against them into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the glory of Yah appeared unto all the congregation. Now the most high shows up. He shows up. Daddy shows up. Y'all know when daddy get out, out of that chair? Huh? Daddy ain't get, hey, y'all better be quiet in there. He didn't tell him, oh, no, they just keep on. Cause he said, don't make me get out of this chair. I'm all right, I'm all right. I got so old school now. Don't make me get out of this chair. Cause once daddy get out of that chair, you can cry all you want. I, I'm telling all right? Once I get out of that chair, oh no, somebody get a whoop. I'm not going back to that chair empty handed. <laughs> Verse 20, and Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aaron, saying, Separate yourself from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. The word, the same word, is it's like, And they fell upon their face and said, O oh, Elohim, the God of the Spirit of all flesh, shall one man sin, and will thou be wroth with the, all the congregation? That's what they said. They fell upon their face, they knew what to do. Verse 23 says, and Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Go ahead, Mike. Speaking to the congregation, saying, Get you up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moshe rose up and went into Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. Mm -hmm. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. That's all I'm talking about. Notice this, how, how's the path? Apart. See, there's something that we have to do when we find there's wickedness going on in the congregation. 
I don't care if you got 10,000 or just 10 people. That does not exempt us. This is a mega church, but it's a mega problem. And so Moses is telling us or teaching us here that there, there are people, I don't care if your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your brother, there are people that in your life that you're going to run across that you're going to have to separate from it. Amen. It's just, it's just, it's just bottom line. You say, oh, that's my cousin, that's my uncle. I'm telling you. So verse 27, so they got up from the tabernacle. Go ahead. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Byron on every side. And Dathan and Byron came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little ones and their little children. And Moshe said, Hereby ye shall know that Jehovah hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation, after the visitation of all men, then Jehovah hath not sent me. But if Jehovah make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that pertaineth unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, and then ye shall understand that these men have provoked Jehovah. Mm, not me. But well, Moses just pronounced something. He put it out there. We shall see. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. My goodness. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained to Korah and all their goods. My goodness. Do you see that? That's a serious question. Yes, it is. You could have named this message how not to be buried alive. Hmm? Somebody can write that down. I ain't got no copyrights to it. How not to be buried alive. So the most high showed up, right? And the earth opened up and swallowed them up. And their house and all the men that appeared in Korah and all their good. They and all that appeared to them went down a lot. Can you imagine screaming? Can you imagine the screaming going on? I, 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 you put that? Can you imagine the screaming? I'm sorry, Moses! I'm sorry! It's too late. They had the opportunity to repent. Yes, sir. They had the opportunity yes. to turn from their wickedness. Moses tried to talk to them. Went down a lot into the pits. And the earth closed up upon them. And they perished from among the congregation. And this is what Judas talking about. The game said, Korah. What did he gain from this? What did he gain from this? And all Israel that were round about them fled. I bet they were in a hundred yards. That. Huh? Uh, come on. Can you imagine seeing that? Uh, come on, and they cried of them, but they said, at least the earth swallowed up for us. Yeah. See, y'all know how to do What is judgment begin? In yeah. this house. Does not the writer tell us people say judgment must begin at the house of God? All this stuff happened out there? You're going to have leaders that's dropping dead. That's why if you're a leader, whether you be in-house or watching, with the Holy Spirit telling you to stop doing something, stop doing it. Nobody exempt under the period of grace. Grace ain't no new thing. Verse 35 says, and there came out a fire from Yahweh. Why is that why? Why fire? Because the writer of Hebrews said, our God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. You ain't got to go to hear the burn. Y'all say, I'm a consuming fire. And that came out of a fire from Jehovah and consumed the 250 men. Y'all ain't going to escape neither. Oh my goodness. Y'all not going to escape now. Come on, come on. Come on back. Come on back. Now they want to run to Moses. These kind of people say, Moses, pray for it. No, I'm not proud. I already pray for you. I already pray. I pray that y'all will open up a, a new way to prove to everybody that who just think about this. Why? Why is this in the in the text? I want to just break it down to you. Why is this here? Because Yah had to make an example in Israel. 
So that when the chorus rise up in the future, God say, I ain't changed. I ain't changed. I swallow up their kids. I swallow up their finance. I swallow up their health. I ain't changed. This here for a reason, my beloved. This is not no incident. This is written for us. Paul said, whatsoever things are written was written for our learning that through comfort of the scripture that we can have hope. Don't behave like Corinth. Well, somebody would say, well, you ain't Moses. See, that's how some of the Hebrews might think. You ain't Moses. What? This applies to Israel. We as a people. So here's this issue that, that's written in the text. So all generations can read this and say, oh my goodness. And then how would you feel if that was your uncle Cole? Huh? How would you feel? How would you feel after that about Moses then? 250 men. Gone. They ain't even mentioned their name. You know why? With the text, our text do stuff like this here. Would you be in the midst of that number? That's why a lot of times the text don't mention name. Say, okay, put your name in there. Well, there's no Torah like ours. The living Torah teaches them. It's alive. The word of God is alive. Am I right? Yeah. 250 men just gone like that. If they was married, 250 widows just like that. If they had children, 250 childless kids. Or oh, what? Foolishness. Why are you finding Korah seeking the priesthood when you're going to still be serving Korah? I don't get it. Well, Cora promised you a position or something? Think about that. Why are you following them? That's not your fight. If, uh, if, where are the wives at? Was they that hard headed that they went to stay white? Huh? 250 widows. Children gone. Daddy ain't in around. Don't make no sense. Doesn't make sense. And there came out a five, verse 35 again, from Yahweh and consumed the 250 men that offer unto, or to, that offer or to draw nigh, nigh into instant. Uh huh. Now, guess when they got killed? At prayer time. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Am I right? They got slain. Why? Why is this? You know, because they offer strange spot. Huh? They offer strange spot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go. They drawn near to Yah with a hateful spirit for Moses, his right hand man. And you think that I'm going to answer your prayer? So just, just as your spirit is burning towards Moses, I'm gonna give you what you, what you are. I'm gonna give you a little fire. Since, since you're burning, since, since you're burning that hot, since you that hot at Moses, I'm gonna give you a little fire, a consuming fire. Then my goodness. Then verse thirty-six says, and Yahweh spoke to Moses and said, Speak unto Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest. That he take up the censer out of the burning and scatter down the fire around yonder, for they are kadosh. What? Watch this here. Go ahead, Mike. Verse 38. The censer of these sinners against their own souls. What? Huh? No, no, no. Did you hear that? He that sit, they sit against their own soul. You ain't, listen, young people, you ain't heard, yeah, yeah, you heard your mama a little bit, your dad, your parents, yeah, yeah, but you're really sinning against your own self. That's why the Bible says he, he who sexual sin, he sins against his own body. You're not hurting your parents, you know, really, yeah, we're going to be disappointed, but you really hurt yourself. Good to see you, Miss Bernice. 
Hallelujah. Next week, when Miss Bernice comes, we not letting her come. She's there. Better call the police. You stand right there. She left on us last week. You not even. Amen. Go ahead. So read verse uh, 38 again. The censor of these sinners against their own souls, let them let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar. For they offered them before Jehovah. Therefore they are hollow. Mm. And they shall be assigned to the children of Israel. Can you imagine that? When you come to the altar, the, the washlet, you, you are to see yourself. This is to remind you of what? What happened here? Or oh, you got sin. This is what it's about. That, that beam, the sun is shining down on the rock and it's shining like a mirror. You ought to see yourself. That's what it's for. The word of God is like that. You open up. You don't see your mama, your daddy, your husband, your brother, your sister. You see yourself. Watch yourself. Take it as an example. Beat it. So every time Israel came to them, like, it was, it, it was a mom. It was kadosh. When I look at it, people say, okay, celebrate yourself from sin. That's a powerful lesson right there. That God always use lessons to teach us. The same way that one of the lessons that we took, that they should have got from Numbers chapter uh, 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 with Aaron and the Aaron, when they tried to take Aaron's position, and then the, uh, 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 the, it was the burden of the rod, and God told Moses to put it in the tabernacle, right? It was to be an example. Don't come against the priesthood. Yes. So he says here, go ahead, Mike. And the Azar, the priest, took bra brazen censers wherewith they that were burnt had offered, mm. and they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar, to be a memorial unto the children of Israel, that no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron come near to offer incense before Jehovah, that he be not as Korah and as his company, as Jehovah had said to him by the hand of Moshe. But on the morrow, all the congregation now, of the what I want to say here before we read that, I'm going to show you here that. Rebellion is contagious. Just because somebody sees something happen to you, don't mean they're going to learn. Watch this here. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moshe and against Aaron. The whole, saying, now they thought, now, we, now it was 250. Now the whole congregation. You would think that that site that they would learn, said, man, y'all on the own on that. See, when there's rebellion, rebellion is contagious. What's this? Come here, Mike. Saying, ye have killed the people of your home. Now, how could Moses open up the ground? How is Moses a, a magician and send down fire? See, they didn't recognize in, in their ignorance or rebellion spirit that God did that. I didn't choose this. No man in their right mind, and I did say in, in, in your right mind, would choose to be a pastor. If you really understand pastorhood. Your whole family is something. See, but when you're hardened, in John chapter 10, verse 10, then you think it's fun and games. Because you love to hear people call you pastor and brainy chicken and all that foolishness. You ought to feed God flock. You got to say things that you don't want to say to people that you are cool with or committed with or you, you love and respect. But you got to chastise. You got to discipline. That time that you don't want to say, but as soon as later, you got to say something. And it don't feel good. That's what people don't understand. Amen. Nothing funny, you know what I'm saying? But God gives you grace. You know, 
The first murder that took place was a shepherd. Abel was a shepherd. In Egypt, they saw shepherds as abominations. We have made pastor uh, just a glorious thing, but it's not. It's very difficult. Very difficult. So here it is, the next day, the whole congregation, uh-oh, Moses, you outnumber them. Go ahead. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moshe and against Aaron, that they looked towards the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of Jehovah appeared. And Moshe and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Jehovah spake unto Moshe, saying, Get you up from among this congregation that I may consume them as in a moment. Why Moses always got to tell the people? See, that's what leaders do. You, you don't stop warning the people. Okay. Just because they didn't listen the last time, you got to keep warning the people. That's what shepherds do. Yeah. You keep warning them. Why? So your blood, their blood won't be on your hands. Hallelujah. Go ahead. They fell upon their faces. And Moshe said unto Aaron, Take his censure and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly into the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from Jehovah. Mm. The plague is begun. Mm. He sensed it. He sensed it. That's why I say, if I ever say, hey, we need to get right, we need to stop doing this here. Because that's how Yah moves in me. You just sensed. That we need to do this here. You just sis. Let me do that. All that I, I heard. I, I just, you just know in your know. Go ahead. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. Did you hear that? Who stood between the dead and the living? Aaron. What Aaron represent? The high priest. Is not Yahshua our high priest? Is not he standing between us and the dead and the living? Huh? He is our high priest. He stood. Go ahead. Now, they that died in the plague were 14,700, mm -hmm. besides them that had died about the matter of course. Mm. And Aaron returned to Moshe into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. Oh. What that teaches? Yeshua can't save everybody. Because the rebellion don't want to be saved. Huh? The rebellion don't want to be saved. But I want to bring something out. Let's turn to Psalm 42. You only know this here if you study. Though Korah was a rebellion father, but the Most High delivered his children. Korah's sons didn't die. And because of that, them boys was inspired to write. Yes, they was. This is one of their songs right here. This is their song that they, they, their whole life would change that day. It says, as the heart of the deer panted out of the water brook, Soul painted my soul after thee, O Elohim. This is what the boys got from that experience. Yeah. My soul thirsts for Elohim, uh huh? Yeah. For the living Elohim. When shall I come and appear before Elohim? This is the song that they wrote in their experience. Yeah. My tears have been my meat, day and night. Yeah. Why they continue to say unto me, Where is that God? Uh huh? This is what they wrote, y'all. This was the songs of the Korah wrote. He said that when I remember thee, when I call to mind these things, I pour out my soul. For I had gone with the multitude. What? You hear what he said? Huh? I have gone with the multitude. I went with, with them to the house of Elohim with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that killed him. Hallelujah. Then he says, this is what they wrote. Can you feel the experience? 
Wild doubt cast down. Their whole life will change that day. Why are thou cast down? Oh, my soul? That's the question. And why are thou disputed in me? Hope thou in Elohim. Why well, shall yet praise him for the help of his country? Oh, my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, when I remember thee from the land of Jordan, I don't know, I don't know the words right there. Deep, deep call it to deep. The noise of the water pour. All thou waves and all thou be willing, right? Billows are gone over me. Yet Yahweh will continue or command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, the songs shall be with me. And my prayers unto Elohim for my life. I will say to Elohim, my rock. Why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the, of the oppression of my enemy? As with the sword in my bone, my enemy reproach me while they say daily unto me, Where is thou God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why did it be quiet within me? Hope thou in Elohim. For I shall yet praise him. Hallelujah. For he is thy help, my confidence, and my Elohim. Hallelujah. Huh? Yes. This is what these boys wrote. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Yes. They didn't stop there. Verse 44, just a few more verses. Chapter 44. Ooh. We have heard with our ear, O Elohim, our Father, have told us what works thou did in the days, in the time of old. How thou did drive out the heathen with thy hand and planted them. How thou did afflict the people and cast them down. For they for they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand, thy arm, and the light of thy company, because thou hast favor unto them. Thou art my king, O Elohim. Commander, the liver of Bajaka. And they go on and on, man. They just, them boys, that was just one long lesson. They learned a lot. And I can, I can give you uh, the ones that they wrote. Uh, I mean, they, they did their thing. You can look at the songs, and they'll have the songs of chorus bound. And you can read them. So they, they survived that dilemma. They survived that memory. These things are written, guys, to teach us. We read the whole chapter down, but it would do no good if we do not take heed to the warning. Let's go back and close in the book of Jude. That's where we got it from. So, again, Jude is warning us about the last day apostate. The Most High do not change. All the thought has come from the Most High. We read that in Romans chapter 8. Kids, it doesn't matter if, if your mama is wrong, your dad is wrong, or whatever, they still the thought. Y'all understand that, young people? They, they still the thought. Your mama, daddy can be wrong as the be, but they are the thought. They don't speak against the thought. Because the promise given to children, honor your mother and your father that you may live a long life. Hallelujah. A long life. So we took this from the book of Jude. Well, Jude is warning us about the last day apostate of leadership, speaking evil of dignity, as he says in verse 8. Likewise, also the filthy dreamers, the father of the flesh, Jude 1 8, despising dominion. Speak evil of dignity. This is what they do. You say, this is what's going to be happening in the last days. Yet Michael the archangel went contending with the devil. He disputed about the body of Moses. Does not bring an accusation against a well accusation, but said that Yahweh rebuked thee. But not these people. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know, natural blue beasts. And those things, they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them. Why, Jude? For they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedy after the arrow of Balaam for money. 
for reward and perish in the game set of court. What did he get? Nothing. These are spots in your feast of charity where they feast with you. Feeding themselves without fear, clouds, they are without water, carried about of wind, trees, who fruit withered, without fruit twice dead, plucked up by the root, raging waves of the sea, forming of their own shame, one the stars to whom is reserved in their blackness of darkness forever. This thing has been going on for years. Why? Because Enoch said, Enoch, also the seven from Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, Yahweh come with ten thousand of his saints. What are you going to do to people like this here? To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that the ungodly among them and all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed above and of all their hard speech which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are mongers, complainers, walking out their own lust and their mouths speaking great swelling words, having man's curse of uh, adoration because of advantage. In other words, they have the mouth to speak. But then Jude wants to warn us how to study, to encourage us. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles, our master, Yeshua HaMashiach, how that they told you, therefore, there shall be mockers in the last days or last time who shall walk out of their own unguarded lust. These be they who separate themselves since they have not what? The spirit. But he says here, but ye, how to study, yes. build up yourself on the most holy faith, praying in the Ruach Kadesh. Keep yourself in the love of Elohim, looking for the mercy of our master, Yeshua HaMashiach, into eternal life. And some having compassion, make a difference. And others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of the glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God and Savior be glory and majestic dominion and power both now and ever forever. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 That is the appointment to the house of Israel. That their words are still alive today. Let this be a warning to the house of Israel. It's not what the nation do to us, but what we have done to ourselves. What the nation, what we have done unto ourselves. There's enough in this room, enough people in this room that we know that we need to test your turn back to the most.